Welcome to another episode in the game programming series. Um, this is the second episode in the game loop, uh, uh, the game loop series, I guess, or uh, uh, sequence of game loop episodes that we're doing. Um, and I did the first one, which was a, a relatively short one where I did an explanation on the game loop, and then we started implementing some stuff. Um, I'm doing a second one. <clears throat> I'm going to do it a bit differently. First of all, uh, in, the, in the last one, I noticed that I was a bit, um, um, I just didn't feel uh, really comfortable while working on, on, the, on the implementation. I was a bit rushed because I figured, well, I'm, uh, there are some stuff that I'm, 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 I'm not completely clear on and I'm just messing around and I didn't want to bother you all. But I figured, okay, let's, let's do a reset in terms of for myself, a reset and just take a slightly different approach where I'm just going to do uh, what I normally do, which is just sit on my, uh, sit or stand behind my desk and just work on, on what I'm working on, making mistakes, um, using a search engine, whatever, to figure out what I need to figure out <clears throat> and uh, just go from there. Um, and I'll, so, and I will stop whenever I think, okay, this is, uh, this is a good moment to stop. Uh, it might be an hour, might be a little bit longer, might be shorter, uh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, so I'm just going to take a slightly different approach and we'll see how it goes. Um, all right, so this is where we left off last time. So if I now do a cargo run, you can see we got the hello world. I think what I'm going to start with now is I'm going to change the uh, print LM to use uh, a crate to actually um, paint on the terminal screen so that we can do some stuff where we uh, where we actually re uh, continuously show the frames per second on the screen. So uh, let's see, so crates.io. <clears throat> we need a crate, I know there is a crate and I searched for it before. I think I'm not sure if I can remember it, um, but it's about um, something with therm, I guess, in it. Let's see. Mm. There was a crate that I found which also did uh, where you could actually use the, the terminal as a, as a screen to quote unquote draw on instead of just having a line by line terminal. Now, the question is, of course, where is it? Now, there was this category. Let's see. Not sure if this one is in there. Command line interface, right? And then I think it was was it rusty line? Let's see. No, this is not the one. No. I think it was mortal that was the one that I found. Yeah. So this is a platform independent terminal interface. Um, and it has, uh, you can have the terminal uh, interface for a line by line output, or you can have the screen interface to treat the entire terminal window as a drawable buffer. Right. And so that's what we wa basically want. So we can, so each of the changes must be followed by a call to refresh. Right, so what we can do here is we can init init uh, initialize a new screen and then from there on we can actually start drawing stuff and then refresh whenever we're ready to show something. And so I think there is, yeah, so there's clear screen where we can uh, actually, clear the internal screen buffer. Runs the internal buffer to terminal screen. Well, that's we don't want to clear the internal buffer. We want to actually clear the terminal buffer itself. But I guess what you could do, of course, is just clear screen. Well, let's just give it a try. And first of all, let's see if there's actually maybe 
some examples there are okay so let's see screen mm -hmm. all right it reads events on the raw screen so it clears the screen then it writes something and then it writes it at a different location so i guess what we could do is just well, we'll have to see. Again, we could just write add and then just write empty, uh, just write spaces in there. <clears throat> but maybe the clear screen actually does clear the entire screen. Or am I missing a, a clear function? No. Well, let's see. Let's just first start with um, actually using this. So, Let's go to cargo.toml on add a first dependency, which will be mortal. Just accept the latest verses from that for now. And we probably don't need them all, but let's leave them in there for now. And so I guess. Now, how do we initialize this setup? Draw screen, right. So we create a new screen. We need to give it a, give it a config and we can just use the default config for now, which seems fine. And so because, for now at least, before, because we want to do it in the renderer, we would have to mm, probably <clears throat> add it to the render struct for now, or we could just add it to the game loop struct. Yeah, let's let's do that for now. So we'll say screen is um, this is a struct. So we'll so we'll say this is a screen, and then we probably mm, let's create a new function here. self and we'll return self with oh, so we need to accept the updater which is the u and the d renderer which is r updater u renderer r and the screen will be will be something we'll be defining here. So that's this part and we'll delete those. And actually this, this we need to unwrap this for now. Uh, well, we actually want the whole config in there. Uh, let's see, what am I missing? Like this. Okay, uh, wait, this is the wrong place. So we need to put this here. Okay, and then what's wrong with this? Uh, this should be update. Oh, actually, so this should be update our renderer. All right, so now we have a, a screen object that we can use. And so in the, and then mm, we do need it in the render, of course, we don't need it. We don't need it in the game loop. So we could pass in a reference to the render for now. So let's just do that. So we'll say screen is a reference to screen. And we need to update. This one as well. And then let's see. And then here we actually pass in a side of screen. Mm. 
missing screen right now. This this is now going to become uh, new updater renderer like this. Uh, update render. Okay, and so this should still run. Um, interestingly enough, I expect it to be there, some, there to be some output. But why is there no output? So we are creating a new game loop. Which is this one, then we are looping and we're calling tick. And when we tick, we actually call update and render. And when we render, we actually should be calling print. But there is no output anymore. Why is that? And use variable screen, yes, yeah, sure. And use LBI, yeah. Why is it not printing anymore? What am I missing? Are we actually getting? Okay, we're not even getting to here. Why is that? We are getting to here, right? I wonder is it because we initialized a something that takes should we really have an impact should it? I'm not sure what prepare config is what the default values are. Um Well, I guess could well, there's only one way to find out, and that's to actually use the implementation itself to just write something. So if we take the example here, um, we can clear the screen again. So let's just uh, let's do that in the render here. So we'll clear the screen, then we'll write something out. And I think we also we need to call something like flush or something. Refresh. And this one, I'll just unwrap for now. Let's see what happens. Yeah, there was actually some, something was written to the screen. Yeah. So then I guess, and if we disable this, I guess it's because, um, let's see, target, debug, pocket watch. Mm. I feel like it's clearing the screen and it's writing it, but then the screen is refreshed again. So, Let's look at the um, prepared config. Wait, so pump the new screen interface on standard out, right? That's fine. And so, what is the config that we can get?
Well, I, I guess it's because the because it's actually terminating after the loop. So if you were to put in a, uh, I don't know what's the uh, Rust sleep. This one. So I guess if we were to actually sleep for two seconds. Now we need to run it. Uh, right. Uh, for me this. Yeah, exactly. All right, so now we're sleeping, right now we're sleeping uh, two seconds for every render. Okay, so it is, so then at least we know it works. So let's, uh, let's remove the print land. Okay, and then we'll also change this to uh, one millisecond for now. And so if we, now if we don't re refresh, what happens then? It's still, it's still clear the screen. And if we write, all right, so now it's not writing, right? So we need to do call the refresh to actually write something to the, the buffer. Okay. And so what, so what we could do now is, well, there are a couple of things. First of all, it would be nice if we could just keep it running and then wait for uh, for an input queue apparently to stop. So we, we should probably just use this exact setup and then we can actually listen to an event and just let this loop forever and then quit if we get a, um, if you get the correct event. So let's uh, move this here. Now we'll continue to unwrap for now. And right, and so we can for each loop, and so this is. This could be something that we actually do in the update, um, the update call, just to uh, to have it do something. Um, so we'll take screen by reference, and then here we can actually check if we get an. We've got an event from screen. Um, let's see. Re-event, um, unwrap again. Right, so what we, so we'll have to figure out how we can actually terminate this loop. Mm. Now, the easiest approach would be to just do it in this loop for now. Because if we do it here, then we actually have to, we somehow have to signal back. Well, I guess we could, since we, mm, and we don't have access to the game update here like this this setup isn't really great in terms that we don't really have we don't have access to the game loop so we can't really tell it to terminate although we could i guess um we could maybe do something where we actually tell it to exit yeah let's see so we could say well you can call exit on it <clears throat> and 
if you do, oops, then we would have to make this mutable. Um, we could say self should exit is true. And then up here in the game loop, we would actually say should exit uh, bool. And should exit false. Let's see. All right, so this will change. Let's turn it off for now. And so uh, let's never use that's true. And then we probably have to, at least for now, we'll have to pass in the, the exit command here. And so we'll say uh, exit, and this will be in fn mute, which, let's see, how do you define this? FN mute. Let's see. Mm, okay, so we've got an FN once. We want the FN mute. Or we just say where f is fm mute. Okay. So we would actually. This is definitely not the direction we want to go for an actual implementation, but for now it's a good exercise to see what happens. So we'll say fm mute. And then. Oh, and then here. And so uh, exit will be F, like this. Right, and so we, now we need to add it here. So this will become F, uh, where F is Fn mute. Right, and then we need to also accept Exit, which is an F in this case. Mm. Yes. So this now needs. So here we actually need to call, uh, pass in, let's see, well, actually it needs to be before the screen. So what we want to pass, in, but it needs to be a reference, I think, right? So we need to pass in self.exit, but I'm like, this isn't going to work, I think, because Attempt to take value exit. Hmm. So how would we pass in this? Now, even if we if we fix this. This still isn't going to work because we need a mutable reference to cell.exit 
and we will and we and we have an immutable reference to self.screen. And so that's not going to work here. So we would still need to do some signaling back. So I think we're going to leave this for now. We're going to do the, the simple one where we just do do it down there for now. I think that makes we could either just fumble around and try to get this to work, but even if we did, this is definitely not the approach that we want to take eventually. So it doesn't really make sense to go through all that trouble now. Uh, let's see. Oh, this can stay. Yeah, so exit can. All right. And so we're going to move this out of here for now. I'm going to move it here. So here we should actually be able to call game loop dot screen. Um, and this can be gone. If if it's Q, we will just quit. Right. Okay, and so this should, <clears throat> and now we can just say, um, loop, and we'll just loop forever until we get the, uh, the game loop screen. So let's see what this does. So it should keep looping if I press Q. Yeah, so it, this is working as expected. Um, and now we could actually just write some more to the screen. So we are, uh, so let's just um, uh, running a game loop, press Q to stop. Yep. And now the next part is to, um, let's see, screen dot write at, I guess, Row column, we'll see. Hello, we can just move this down here. Let's see what this does. We got an error. Uh, okay, so this isn't actually, I guess we would need to do a format macro here. Uh, let's see. Like this. All right, it needs to be stir. Okay, and so this should, um, well, actually we need to probably need to refresh this or clear the screen maybe. Well, we are clearing the screen here. And we are updating the value. Mm, is this correct? So it's just printing hello to world, but it's not printing anything else right now. Ah, wait a second. When I hit enter, it actually updates. So why is that? Interesting, because here we do a tick, then we read an event, and is perhaps this is blocking. Yeah, it could very well be that this is actually blocking for a for an input. So let's see. So if we go back to and we where is this at? This is at the screen itself.
free defense. All right, so this is a timeout actually. I see, we'll wait indefinitely, okay. So that's what's going on. So if we set this to some, and what does it require? It requires a duration. And the duration is just duration new, duration from Miller's right. So we don't really, we don't really want to block at all. So we can just say zero. Missing one more, yes, missing one more. Um, right. I think it's duration, right? All right, so there we go. And does Q, yes, so Q still works. Okay, so now we actually have a screen where we can we can do some painting and actually start uh, showing some information about the game loop itself. Uh, so let's see. Mm, okay, so what what is the next step? I guess we could we could just commit this. Um, Just to to make it a bit more easier visually in the terminal to see, and you can see here to see what I what I actually changed since the last uh, commit. Um, so let's see. So we got this set up. Now we we could do. Um, we could, so let's go to the tick. So what we actually want to do is we want to start, um, we want to start recording the frames per second that we are achieving. <clears throat> so if we go back up here, oh, and by the way, I just, just to uh, note, I did get the, uh, the game programming patterns book. I got it in the mail today, so that's awesome. Now, I didn't read it yet, uh, so I plan on reading it maybe tonight, the first chapter. Um, so yeah, so really looking forward to this, and I hope, and I'm pretty sure actually it will help us with, with this setup in the future as well. Um, <clears throat> but for now, we'll just continue on with what we have right now. <clears throat> and so what we want to do here is, um, we want to record the time the um, time that it's the, the start time is and there is this uh, instant now I think it is I think it's also on um, yeah standard time instant so this is a, a monotonically non-decreasing clock. So basically it just keeps going upwards and you just you can just start at some point and you can read at a, at a different point in time. You can read like how many, uh, um, how much time has elapsed and you can get it in, in seconds or in milliseconds or nanoseconds. And so what we will be doing here is we will be, um, let's see. So you can get the elapsed, which gives you a duration, and then the duration itself, you can actually go to uh, milliseconds, for example. And so that's what we're going to do here. Um, let's see. So we'll get the start time. And so we, we do need to, need to keep track of it. So for now, we're going to keep track of it on the game loop. So this will be the... Um, Let's see, calling it the last run duration, I guess. Something like this, it's fine for now. And so what we want to do here is we want to say, 
Mm, well, actually, we need to last run uh, duration. Yeah. Just call it timer for now. And this would so this would actually be an instant instead of duration. And so here we would say uh, self.timer is instant now. But before that, we, are, we actually want to say uh, let last run duration is self.timer. Uh, what was it again? It was. Uh, now dot elapsed all right so so the timer dot elapsed and then uh, as millis so this will give us the right and so here we actually need a timer which really doesn't really make any sense to start it here i guess but all right it's fine now well, we do actually so this first stick will actually get the duration since it started which might not be great but for now it's fine and so now we have a duration in milliseconds and um let's see so we'll be pass we can pass that on to for now at least to the renderer so the duration as millis so this is just a um, uh, let's see mm. Called this uh, duration. And this was a U128, I believe. And so this is a renderer, and so we would say duration is U128. And see if it still runs. It does, okay. Now we would add um, so we've got the duration here, which is the time it took for the last uh, tick to run. So we can at least start printing that already. So we can say um, the last tick duration in milliseconds this and so that's uh, duration right and so now we see that uh, we set our um, it's interesting that it's actually so we set the the sleep at 100 milliseconds now I do realize that sleep is not always 100% correct but still that's a 15% difference, which is quite large, actually. Um, well, unless, well, I guess, obviously, the rest is also doing something, but I didn't really think that it would take so long each run. So did we, there is no other sleep, right? No, this one is set to zero. So let's see, what if we um, change to 50, what happens? Yeah, there's still, like, there's still the, 12 to 15 milliseconds of uh, of overhead. So even if we were to set this to, I guess, to zero, there's seven to eight milliseconds, as you can see. And if we just, yeah, it keeps, so it might be that's just a, um, yeah, I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure why it's um, why it has a seven milliseconds overhead. Again, it could be because of this.
like if we were to say for i in zero to and we would just disable this no it's still seven to eight now i yeah okay it does quit eventually so it's not this then perhaps it's just the um the writing to the screen that takes up some time so we could just not clear the screen let's see if this changes anything yeah it's down to five to six okay so there is just some overhead in uh, um, um, in just writing to the screen in this using this grade now in in, in a real game loop um, the reason why I was wondering is that in a real game loop obviously like five to six milliseconds is is a huge deal um, uh, as mentioned if you like if you um, if you have uh, if you have 100 updates per second that gives you 10 milliseconds to actually do a single update um, so five milliseconds over it is uh, quite big but it's fine for now um, so we'll move this back to 100 and see yeah and Q is working again okay oh we need to change this loop all right um okay now i'm going to put a cut in the video here uh, i am going to continue uh, recording in a bit uh, so i will be releasing these episodes uh, at the same time um, but there will be a cut here um, so um, uh, just because I have some stuff to do uh, but after that I will continue recording um, and I think what we're going to do then is we're going to um, we're going to write out the actual uh, frames per second that that we are that we are achieving here um, and and then we're going to change this um, this loop to actually have the updater also print the uh, the updates per second and then after that we can actually start working towards having a stable update that runs 100 times per second and then the renderer just runs however fast it can um, and so yeah so that's next um, and as I mentioned I will release them uh, at the same time but I'm going to put a cut in here uh, so uh, hopefully I will see you in the next episode bye bye